Greetings, ladies and mantelgens, and welcome to this latest narration of the web series The Nature of Predators. If you are new to the series, there is a playlist listed down below in the description. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Chapter 174 Memory Transcription Subject Onzo Yodel Technical Specialist Date Standardized Human Time March 26, 2137 United Nations soldiers were amassing by the Governance Hall, the very building where the Federation diplomat once gathered. If the Shadow Cast hideout was in that intricate construction, I could almost respect the brazenness to keep the secretive underbelly so close to every other race. There was a wondrous arrogance to it, the very trait that made the Colchians underestimate humanity, until they no longer had the chance to wipe Earth out. They always assumed that they were untouchable and would handily win the war, until the moment Arthur was ours. While the Terrans were still calculating their moves, Colchian civilians had stormed the hall, and fires danced precariously close to the building. Since the United Nations needed the information within, we were in the process of quelling blazes. The crowd had been incensed by the government throwing away evacuation shuttles, and also that they had lost to the Predator invaders. Once we had assessed the situation, Tyler had found us a group of human soldiers to storm the hall with. I wasn't sure where we were going, but we needed one of the native gods to help us. Every Kalshian responsible for protecting this place seemed to have turned on their government. I don't think they're in on the Shadowcast's locale. I advised Tyler that we need a different way of asking. My gaze monitored Orsel, a Kalshian who seemed none too fond of us. Well, I didn't like her mingling with our posse. I could respect that she had a brain in her skull. If she was right about the Shadowcast being buried below ground, it would make our mission much smoother. My main concern was that, should she end up representing a problem for us, I didn't trust Sovlin's loyalties. The Gojit wouldn't turn on humanity, but I doubted he was capable of putting the trigger on Russell's sister either. This could be a trap set up for us by the Sikh government, luring us into a place where they held the cards. I assume we won't just find a floor plan lying around, huh? Samantha asked. The Gojit hovered a close to Orsel as we moved towards the door. I've been to the basement, your head'll spin trying to get there, through all sorts of twisting corridors and finally down an escalator. They have a subway train that takes you from the hall to the office spaces. I didn't see anything related to the Shadowcast back then, so... It's alright, Nokonus must have had some sort of bunker. Where'd he go off if there was an attempt on his life? The idiot might not have expected an assassination, but he ain't so dumb not to have plans for it, Tyler explained. We just gotta ask the guards if they know where Nikki went in an emergency, private bunker or some shit. Or so cult with nervousness. Well, what are you going to do about the civilians who pushed their way inside? They don't bother us, and we don't bother them. They want to attack us, we have to defend ourselves. But hopefully, they know we're here for the shadow cast. If the bullet starts flying, yeah, better duck for cover. Cause I sure as ain't giving you a weapon. That blue helmet tells our boys you're with us. Coolio? Um, I don't feel good about being here with, with a bunch of predators with guns. I bared my teeth with exasperation. Have those predators shot you with said weapons? Sobland, your friend, vouched that the humans won't snap. We've lived on a warship with them for months, during life or death battles. Stay behind if you want to or so, but we don't have time to tip claw around your feelings. I want to know why they care so little about the lives of their own people, and why they lied to us. You're here on my planet now, so I doubt there's any avoiding humans anyway. After everything your people are responsible for, I think it's high time you stop treating us like the fecking monsters, Sam grumbled. Sovlin's spines were bristling beneath his vest. Also, can't help how she feels, and she's not responsible for what the Gulchians did. It took me a long time not to be afraid around humans. It's not easy to see you as normal. You always act like it's been easy for us, Baldy. We said hello and everyone tried to wipe us out. Over a billion dead, everyone lost something. But you don't see humans cowering around every alien they see. That's enough, Tyler spat. I understand that you're angry at the Colchians, but Sovlin is right. Orsel had no say in what her government did. She can't help the feeling she's been programmed to have, and she deserves as much patience as we gave any other Xeno. I know it ain't easy, Sam, especially after Carlos, but he'd be the first one to warn you about lumping an entire populace together. The Gojit mimicked a human nod. 
the belief that makes monsters of us all. He was talking about not seeing your enemies as people. Carlos never wavered in that belief, and I don't intend to let you or Ursel make my mistake. And I don't intend to let us get settled with someone who'll get in the way of our mission, I countered. This is way more important than what you owe Ursel. This is a favor for Marcel, and also the answers for why all of this and our torment happened. If Ursel can't control their feelings, then she's not coming with us. Ursel wrapped her tentacles around her torso in a self-soothing gesture. Ah... Uh, I'll be fine. He killed my brother, and what they did is the reason the predators with guns are, are here in the first place. If you have a chance to get rid of them and expose their real motives, uh, I won't be in your way. I just wish we'd get it over with. It's as simple as facilitating revenge for a brother's murder. I still don't trust her not to be a liability, but she doesn't seem like a shadow cast plant. I know how I felt, just seeing my hands are burned by those exterminators. I could recall the alien struck arriving at my family home, and Papa shooting the Hensa for a quick death. Why couldn't the exterminators give predators a swift, painless end if they had to kill our beloved pets? Thinking about the look in our domesticated pet killer's eyes, I could imagine her tan and black pelt vanishing beneath tongues of flame. The fact that Dino's coloration had been the exact same dug up all my memories. The moment I first encountered a Terran dog, imagining what had been done to our beloved animals made me furious, just as much as the thoughts of the fossil who'd placed me on predator disease medication. My claws curled up with fury as the slights against the yodel swelled in my mind. The glossing of Carter hadn't made me feel any better, but it hadn't eased my loathing of the Colchians either. If I were honest, I hated having to work alongside someone who lived a comfortable life on offer. By her own words, Orsel hadn't played an active role against the Shattercast. That made her complicit, as soon as she'd known the truth about her government. I was here to fulfill Tyler's promise to search for Slanek, not for the secrets humanity sought. Whatever reason the Commonwealth gave for why this needed to happen, it wouldn't suffice. I couldn't care less. Tyler placed a hand on my shoulder, making me jump. Monzo, did you hear me? We're moving, and I need your genius mind working for us. You good, bro? I'm fine. I just was remembering the day they burned my hansa, I admitted. Hearing the Colchians justify what they've done, I'm not sure I want to be in the room for that. Honestly, I ain't sure I can deal with their contempt for us either. You don't gotta hear it first hand, my man. Don't think I don't know you came here for me, and I appreciate it. Let's see if the shadow costs there, alright? I lifted my rifle in acknowledgement and bounded off to the UN soldiers. We pushed our way through the thronging crowd scaring them back by popping a few rounds into the ground. That proved to be an expedient way to clear a path as we moved into the front door. We spotted a caution in the guard's armor, who seemed to be helping the rebels milling about in the ornate entryway. Towering pictures of species working together on legislation mocked me from the walls. The false promise of federation put in a visual form. I tried not to focus on the amicable body language of diplomats past and present, and instead watched Tyler round on the guard. The blonde human's impatient eyes could be felt beneath the biohazard mask. Do you know where the Nikonis' bunkers, safe room, or whatever you want to call it, where that is? Where he'd hide if shit hits the fan. Ah, Tyler, ever so eloquent. Uh -huh. um, yes, I do, the Colchian gasped out. Then you'll show us there. We'd like to pay your leader a visit. Uh, okay, but Chief Moronis' bunker is sealed. Even us guards don't have high enough clearance to give you access. Samantha raised an explosive charge. Don't worry, I have a key. Tyler leveled his weapon at the local guard, who wisely took the hint to get moving. The bar through the entrance hall had been walked by many diplomats, though protesters had taken to smashing anything that looked fragile. Unlike the one at our behest now, a few defenders of Offa who resisted the mob had been overrun. They were in the custody of furious Colchian civilians. Most ripples paid little mind to the hundreds of UN soldiers, swarming in the direction of the Smyrona's fellow's bunker. The largest group of distance had filtered into the now vacated auditorium, where Noah had given his speech not too long ago. It felt like another lifetime, but none of the Commonwealth's henchmen showed their faces here today. The Shadowcast has gone into hiding, it's quite clear. They think that they can stay off the radar and regroup, but we won't let that happen. 
A handful of protesters did scatter in fright at the sight of us, but those who'd quietly sympathized with humans fell in behind our troops. They must have figured that we were seeking out the Shadow Cast, who definitely lacked the backing of their citizenry right now. Sovlin was right about the hall being built in a disorienting maze. Unless you treaded these paths every day, an escort was needed to find any particular destination outside the auditorium. Tyler questioned whether the guard was misleading us, before the goge had piped up that it was in fact a meandering maze. All Sal was taking in the sights we passed in silence and seemed to be considering whether to shrink back into the crowd of Kulshin followers. I wouldn't mind dropping her off with her kind. Before Rassel's sister could act on that thought, the guard that we were trading steered us towards an escalator. Sovlin's eyes lit up with recognition, which was a good sign that we were getting somewhere. There was an unspeakable awkwardness in hundreds of Terran soldiers. Having to walk down the moving stairway in a single file, per Tyler's directives, Sam and I each perched on a rolling railing with Sovlin in front of the large Terran on the step, so their four guns pointed at any traps below. All cells stuck right behind us. She did look at as curious as I felt to see whether this theory was true. I was excited by the prospect of bringing this mission to a close and ensuring that the Kolshin's legacy of destruction came to a close. The Kolshin guard pointed away from a subway train, walked to his indicated spot, and popped out a false wall. Down a a another few flights of stairs, you'll hit a blast door. I'm not sure explosives are big enough. Key! You need to pass the retinal scan with authorization. And use today's code. I don't have either of those. Regardless, if the Mariness is there, nobody will be allowed in or out. So it's kept shut by a powered switch. Obviously, we just need to cut the power to the door, I pointed out. Do we have any EMP grenades? Tyler grunted with contentment. The range of those bad boys is short, but we're sure do. We'll scan through the walls to find where the switch is. And light it up. Uh, okay, hang on, Rosal piped up. How do you know where to find Chief Moronis or what's waiting inside? Well, we don't, but I'm going to find someone who does. Let the specialists do their business, and we'll see if what's at the back there is really a bunker. A human soldier searched for the exact location of the switch before attaching an EMP grenade nearby. She gestured for anyone with electronic devices to step back to keep them from getting fried, then triggered the device. Like its jaw had been pried open, the mechanism seeding the blast holes released its grip. The thick barriers slid open in slow fashion and uncorked the mysterious construction behind. All Sal's eyes widened with shock as she glimpsed the scale of the cavernous space behind the entryway. Her theory about the shadow cast location was spot on. The door had a concealed entry to the head of the state's bunker, a city stretched as far as the eye could see, with rounded cave-like edges above rather than a natural sky. Plants had been set up in pathways between multi-story modules and mile-long spaceship hangars. Lights hovered above the greenery to aid its growth, simulating sunlight and illuminating the cavern. Thousands of Colchians milled about the streets, with some flocking to shops. There were a few armed sentries posted by the opened doors, though none drew their weapons on us. The Terrans were quick to disarm them and lined them up by the doors. I could appreciate the impressive feat of engineering. To cave out an expansive settlement down here, they had answered numerous questions about how this conspiracy sourced its perpetrators, and where the advance fleet had been stashed for all those centuries. I believed fully that, despite the negligible effort to send average civilians to bunkers, Commonwealth leadership had hidden here in the face of our invasion. It was in line with the standard selfishness and disregard for lives. Just wait until the Kulshian protesters waltz inside behind the humans and see how an entire society was kept from them. We're going to make uh, someone point us to Chief Moronis. Where is Moronis? Tyler barked, leaning close enough that his breath struck the sentry's cheeks. I think he should discuss the terms of your surrender. The shadow feet thug gulped. Ah, Chief Moronis uh, th thought you might find us. Uh, d don't worry, he, d he didn't run. He wanted to parley and told us to send you to him. The five-story building painted the color of seagrass. Uh, straight to your right. Uh, it's the true office of the chiefs. Uh, a short walk from the hall. I pinned my ears back. How do we know that this isn't a trick? You don't fight fair. Uh, because it's over. This is the only chance our work will be maintained. For the countenance of all life. And Moronis gambled that maybe you could understand. We know you want answers. So hear it from the top. Uh, let us spell out our proof that you will kill all your friends. Whether you mean to or not. 
Tyler hesitated before stepping back from the culsion. Lead us to him. Try anything and you can forget any mercy. You can forget giving your life. As Samantha, Orsal, and Sovereign followed after Tyler, I found myself hanging around by the stationary group of UN soldiers. I didn't want to hear the root of Colshin's propaganda, explaining why humanity would snap and wipe out their sapient allies. What was the point of entertaining such wild delusions, especially when this could easily be a trap? I meant to stick with my exchange partner the whole way, but he said that he wouldn't force me to listen to the Federation bullshit. I could watch his back from out here, searching for signs of the Shadow Fleet and treachery. When the time came to search for Snake, I would be there to help my human friend fulfill his promise. I cleared my throat for attention. You go on ahead. I'll wait out here. If anything smells off, get out of there. Tyler glanced over his shoulder before giving him a curt nod. I hate separating from you, but I respect you taking care of yourself. Don't worry. We'll see you on the flip side, Anzo. I flicked my ears in acknowledgement and watched the Skullshroom protesters trail his contingent of Terran soldiers. Those answers meant a lot more to the posse than they did to me. All I cared about was protecting Lian and my friends. A sliver of me was curious what justification the Shadow Cast thought humanity would care about, but it would be delusional ravings if they truly thought Earth would carry on their work. I rested back on my heels about the grueling day's exploration and committed to a diligent watch outside the building where Moronis was supposed to be waiting. As long as humanity found the closure that they were looking for, perhaps this wouldn't be an entirely wasted endeavor. End of chapter I would just quickly like to thank the T5 peeps, Dragon Soup, Cold War Boomer Waffen, Severin Cerberus, Red Panda 121, Leslie 517, Bushmaster 177, Caspar Arnold, Cam Maxwell, Sans the Skeleton, Lightjock, Dragzoon WRE, and Lord Azrakal. Thank you very much.